Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for day three of the 12 days of Litmus, this day being my favorite short story. Um, and anyone who watches the channel with any type of regularity knows that I don't like to take orders, even when I'm the one giving them. So, uh, when doing this part of the tag, not the tag, the series, I suppose. Um, I chose against going with Sea Oak by George Saunders, or Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway, or uh, A Real Doll by A.M. Holmes, The Genius by Donald Bartholomew, etc., etc. I'm going to go with one of the first short stories to change what I thought a short story did, even before I found it in a collection that changed what I realize short stories really are. This collection includes, and this is the Scribner Anthology of Contemporary Short Fiction, uh, revised and updated second edition. It really is a good collection. It includes The School by Donald Bartholomew, Caviar by T.C. Boyle, uh, Nilda by Juno Diaz, We Didn't by Stuart Dybeck, Communist by Richard Ford, A Real Doll by A.M. Holmes, uh, Stone Animals by Kelly Link, Sea Oak by George Saunders, among others. There really are uh, a host of impressive short stories in this collection. But I did not first read this short story in this collection. Not too long ago on the channel, I told the story on one of the Harry Potter videos about uh, a writer's group that I ran, or that I was part of, during my undergrad days. And during that first summer, we, all of us wrote ten stories, the three of us, all of us. There were three of us. We each wrote ten stories. We had one pass on a week for revisions. Um, but eventually, in the midst of the summer, we realized that we were sort of quagmired inside of our own reading habits still, despite the fact that we were doing this, we were writing this myriad of stories. So, um, one of the other members of the group brought We Didn't by Stuart Dybeck, which It is a short story of the great without. It is a short story that goes places you didn't see coming. It is a short story that is not the anti-Hemingway, but if it is not the anti-Hemingway, it is certainly an anti-venom to the Hemingway virus, if that makes any sense. And I think I will, I'll explain a little bit about that later, but finally I got this collection in grad school and we didn't read, we didn't, for class. And I sent a, while I was in grad school, I was especially full of piss and vinegar because I was accruing a great deal of debt and very little time for a degree that wasn't going to net very much. So I would spend a lot of my time outside of class, not just doing the reading for class, but reading everything that these books had to offer. And at the conclusion of the quarter, I sent a particularly spicy email to the professor that gave us this great book and had us read all the bad stories from it. Um, but anyway, like I said, uh, Stuart Dybeck's We Didn't is a story of the great without. And I will start by reading this from this collection. It is page 181. It's the very beginning of the story. We didn't in the light, we didn't in the darkness, we didn't in the fresh cut summer grass or in the mounds of autumn leaves or on the snow where moonlight threw, our, threw down our shadows. We didn't in your room, on the canopy bed where you slept in the bed, the canopy bed you slept in, the bed you slept in as a child, or in the backseat of my father's rusted rambler which smelled of the smoked chubs and kielbasa he delivered on weekends from my uncle Vincent's meat market. We didn't in your mother's Buick 8 where a rosary twined in the rearview mirror like a beaded black snake with silver cruciform fangs. At the dead end of our lover's lane, a side street of abandoned factories, where I perfected the pinch and s that springs open a bra, 
behind the lilac bushes in Marquette Park where you first touched me through my jeans and your nipples swollen against the transparent cloth seamed the shade of lilacs in the balconies of the now defunct Clark Theater where I wiped popcorn salt from my pants and slid them up your thighs as you whispered, I feel like Doris Day is watching us. We didn't. How adept we were at fumbling, how perfectly mistimed our timing, how utterly we confused energy with ecstasy. Uh, and I will not, I will not ruin the surprise that we get to at the end of that first section. But this is a short story that is so gorgeously written for things that never happen, and so tragically written for things that do happen. And um, the mayhem from that first part continues. And it is a story of constant without. <clears throat> this from page 185. We would kiss, your mouth would open, and when your tongue flicked repeatedly after mine, I would unbutton the first button of your blouse, revealing the beauty spot at the base of your throat, which matched the little smaller spot I loved above the corner of your lips. And then the second button, which opened a delicate gold cross, which opened on a delicate gold cross, which I had always tried to disregard as merely a fashion statement, dangling above the cleft of your breasts. The third button exposed the lacy swell of your bra, and I would slide my hand over patterned mesh, feeling for the firmness of your nipple rising to my fingertip. But you would pull slightly away, and behind your rapid, and behind your rapid breath, your kiss would grow distant and I would kiss harder, trying to lure you back from wherever you had gone, and finally, holding you as if consoling a friend, I'd ask, what are you thinking? Although, of course, I knew. And um, when you read this story, you will know as well where this person has gone, and the deep symbology. See, a lot of times on the channel, I actually get in, I, I try to get into the literary analysis of what's going on and the symbology behind things. But with this story, I don't want to do that in a cursory type of video such as this because I think everyone who's watching this owes it to themselves to read this short story because of the things that it accomplishes in such a, a short period in so few words and so beautifully while it's doing it. Uh, but before making my final point, I will read this uh, at the conclusion because I think that there is a little taste at the end of, of exactly why this short story was so refreshing to me when I, when I first was exposed to it. <clears throat> Maybe when it really ended was the night I felt we had just reached the beginning. That one time on the beach in the summer when our bodies rammed so desperately together that for a moment I thought we did it. And maybe in our hearts we did, although for me then, doing it in one's heart didn't quite count. If it did, I suppose we'd all be Casanovas. We rode home together on the L train that night, and I felt sick and defeated in a way that I was embarrassed to mention. Our mute reflections emerged like a negative exposure on the dark, greasy window of the train. Lightning branched over the city, and when the train entered the subway tunnel, the lights flickered as if the power was disrupted, though the train continued rocketing beneath the loop. When the train emerged again, we were on the south side of the city, and it was pouring, a deluge as if the sky had opened, and opened to drown, the innocent and guilty alike. We hurried from the L station to your house holding the Navajo blanket over our heads until, soaked, it collapsed. In the dripping doorway of your apartment building, we said goodnight. You were shivering. Your bikini top showed through the thin blouse plastered to your skin. I swept the hair away from your face and kissed you lightly on the lips. Then you turned and went inside. I stepped into the rain, and you came back out calling after me. What? I asked, feeling a sudden surge of gladness to be summoned back to the doorway with you. Want an umbrella? I didn't. That little statement, I didn't, at the end of such a rambling uh, series of paragraphs, 
at the end of such a Faulkner-esque series of paragraphs to get a very Hemingway statement was the very slap in the face that I needed at the time when I thought I was in danger, the same type of danger that I think many artists find themselves in at the beginning of uh, a blossoming type of urgency within their art. And that is, I had found someone who spoke to me, which was Hemingway, and I thought, of course, it's all got to be like that. And this is another, this is a subject that I will talk about again tomorrow, in tomorrow's video, uh, with my favorite novel, The Contrarian That I Am. But that, that very short statement, I didn't, at the end there, of, of such beautifully written prose, such anti-Hemingwayan prose, um, was a slap in the face, the, even the very first time I read it. And I knew not everything had to be these short little punctuated statements, like I didn't, like we didn't, uh, like Hemingway writes. But if you can mix them in, it is so much more effective. And at the time that I read this short story for the very first time, I really was under the impression that Hemingway was it, man. Like, that's what you did. Um, sure, there were good short stories before Hemingway, uh, but since, I, I don't know. I, I hadn't really found any. And there's another trap that you can fall into if you take the, uh, the literature as education course is that a lot of the stuff you read is going to be ancient. This is, I believe, 60s, 70s, but um, I'm not sure. But this is very much in response to a lot of the classics that you end up reading, this type of writing. So it came to me at a very crucial time in my writerhood, and it is stuck through me, with me through crucial times in my readerhood. Um, so that is We Didn't by Stuart Dybeck. That is the short story that I will choose for my favorite short story. I am uh, eager to hear what you guys have to say. If you have read this, if you have not read that, this, if you have even heard of Stuart Dybeck, it's, it's hard to say in what circles you hear about what writers. But um, leave comments in the, uh, the place below, the comment sections, I suppose. Uh, what you think about short stories in general, if there's a short story that sticks out to you in this way, that came to you in a period where you really sort of needed it. So that is day three of the 12 days of litmus. Tomorrow we will be back, and I hope to see you here for my favorite novel.